We've already briefly mentioned the concept of equilibrium, most notably for phase transitions. It's time to bring that idea into sharper focus in preparation for talking about solubility, though we won't be doing a truly deep dive into equilibrium for several more lessons yet. Let's put this picture into more of a chemical notation, and to simplify our picture a bit, let's focus on just a pair of these reactions, melting and freezing. Now let's write these two processes very specifically as chemical reactions. Writing the reactions this way makes it appear as though a sample of water is either undergoing the reaction of melting or the reaction of freezing, but probably not both at the same time. Let's examine that idea on a molecular level. So let's imagine the solid on the left. Remember that every molecule has a different amount of kinetic energy, and their collisions can transfer their energy to each other. This means that occasionally, through these random collisions, one of the molecules may get enough energy to escape the intermolecular attractions that are holding it in place, making that particular molecule mobile, like in a liquid. If enough kinetic energy gets added, all of the molecules will have enough energy to be mobile, melting the solid. But let's imagine an intermediate state, where there are some molecules that have enough energy to be mobile, but also some molecules that do not. This is like an ice cube floating in water. Now ask yourself this question. Will the same molecules always be the ones that are liquid? And will the same molecules always be the ones that are solid? Or might they change places? Because the molecules are in constant random motion and they are colliding with one another, it is to be expected that a fast-moving molecule from the liquid could collide with a slow-moving molecule from the solid and transfer enough energy for the first one to freeze in place and the second to gain enough energy to start moving. Which means that we need to think about both of these processes as happening simultaneously. Even if we have a constant amount of solid ice and liquid water in the sample, the amounts aren't constant because the processes have stopped, but because the speeds of the two reactions balance each other. This is an equilibrium, specifically a dynamic equilibrium, where the state of the system is constant, but not because the reactions have stopped, but because the reactions proceed at equal and opposite speeds, resulting in no net change in the system. So how do we represent the state of affairs? Well, the first way we wrote it is actually pretty close. What we do is we write one of the equations in the standard forward direction, and we write the reverse equation backwards. And then we stack them on top of each other. We have the forward reaction over the reverse reaction, with arrows going both ways to indicate that both reactions are happening simultaneously. Of course, there are some things we can do to adjust the equilibrium. If we add some heat to the system, the rate of melting will increase and the rate of freezing will decrease. In future lessons, we will learn even more about ways to adjust the equilibrium. Let's finish up by looking at how this picture of dynamic equilibrium affects our understanding of a phase diagram and a cooling curve. If we start with the sample in the liquid region, just below the boiling point, then we only have liquid water. There is no equilibrium. As we cool the sample down, we still don't have an equilibrium. We are just cooling water. But once we reach the melting point, the temperatures stop going down, and some of the water begins to freeze. Importantly, both the forward and the reverse reaction are going on during this process. But because we are continuing to remove heat from the system, the freezing happens at a greater rate than the melting. Then finally, once there is only solid ice present, continued cooling drops the temperature of the ice. What this means is that the lines on a phase diagram represent the conditions under which there is an equilibrium between two states of matter. The regions in between the lines have a single state of matter with no equilibrium, and the triple point is the single set of conditions where all three states of matter are in equilibrium. As I mentioned at the start of this lesson, we will be going deeper into equilibrium shortly, because these concepts apply to much more than just phase transitions. The key take-home point for now is that equilibrium does not mean a halting of the reaction. It means balancing of a forward and a reverse reaction.